All right, guys, welcome to this episode of the Hyperfast Wealth Summit. I'm here today with Sunil Saxena. We are going to be breaking down a project that we just completed, going through the numbers. So stay tuned. All right, Sunil, how are you doing today? Doing good, just came from a job site. Everything's looking good. We just got a couple of permits yesterday, so I'm excited. We're rocking and rolling on this particular job. Yeah, we, we got a lot of projects going on, but we, we, we got one we just completed. Yeah, we just finished. It's a nice two unit um, in Northeast DC. Sold it relatively quickly and uh, actually sold it during the crazy coronavirus pandemic. So everything's, you know, that one's done in signed, sealed, and delivered. Yeah, this, this one I'm excited to, uh, to talk about today. We're gonna break down the numbers in a minute, but I'm excited to talk about it because like Sunil said, this thing delivered beginning of March, right around then, late February, like right when coronavirus started, right when the lockdown started. Like we couldn't do open houses, couldn't do big events there like we're really good at doing. So a lot of a lot of you know wrenches were kind of thrown at us at the last minute on the sales process but the project ended out mm -hmm. doing pretty well like pretty darn close to our pro forma even though we had this black swan event happen mm -hmm. and uh, we cut a lot of checks to investors last week right yeah we paid all our investors back last week um the top unit uh sold just before coronavirus like the week before we got under contract before everything hit and we actually outperformed on that one. If you, if you remember, we were performing like, um, I think like 825, we actually got closer to 900 for us. We got more in the top unit. Uh, the lower unit, I think we got a little bit less because of coronavirus. I think we would have uh, maybe like 20 to 30,000 more if we would have just, you know, not had this issue. But that's development. We've had, you know, projects where we've made more money because they hit during a good market. And we've had projects that just, for whatever reason, hit during a bad market. And uh, so that's just part of the game. But at the end of the day, we made, you know, actually, I think you know, we actually hit our pro forma on that one because the top unit got more. Yeah, it's pretty, pretty cool to see, like, just how strong we've been telling investors this for years. But it's, it's really cool to kind of see it play out where we have this weird event. We have 40 million people go unemployed across America, which is a, a terrible thing. But D.C., this market is resilient. It kind of like shrugs it off. And right. you know, the price points that our projects are right. dealing with, these are, these are, you know, the typical buyers making at least, you know, six right. figures. And this, mm -hmm. these are the types of jobs mm -hmm. that are very resilient in the DC market, government driven, all of that. And mm -hmm. to me, it's, it's just exciting that we delivered such a great product the numbers worked out pretty darn close to what we thought even though we had this you know Crazy. once in a like generation right. lifetime yeah. multiple generation type event like yeah that's what i mean i i've said it so many times i almost i, I, I don't want to overhype the dc market but I literally feel that the DC market is one of the best in the world, actually. That's why investors from you know all over the globe are, are wanting to invest in, in, in DC. And pretty much for what you said, I mean, we've got this you know, 800, maybe 8,000 pound gorilla called the federal government that always spends money no matter what. And they tend to spend money when things are bad, that's when they spend more money. And the nice thing about DC is you've got that 8,000 pound gorilla, but you've also got so many other industries. We've got, you know, with, we've got Amazon coming in, we've got, um, uh, we're, we're, you know, the suburbs are becoming the data center of the entire east coast of, of the United States. You've got biotech with NIH here. So it's really just an incredible economy that there's always something happening. And especially when you're inside the beltway, like you're saying, you know, DC obviously is inside the beltway. Uh, the jobs tend to be very high paying jobs and they're always there. So um, again, not to overhype it, but um, to me, it's a no brainer you know, invest in DC because the, the, the downside is, is much, um, much more limited than, you know, if you're in Omaha, Nebraska or some smaller market. Yeah. So let's, let's jump into the numbers real quick. I think this is one of the first times we've 
broken down a deal live, so okay. hopefully this goes well. But refresh my mem memory here. We we bought this uh, end of 2018, and what was the uh, price? 650, 650 thousand dollar purchase. Uh, you can say January 1st, 2019, right, right around there. So 650k was the buy, and and what what. What did we buy? It was uh, just a row home, right? A beat up row home? Old row home, very bad shape. Um, it did, it was actually being used as a, it had like two different tenants in it. So right. it was already like a two unit at that time. Yeah, and I don't know if we got any pictures, but maybe if Kelsey throws them up there on this, that people can see exactly. Yeah, it was what it was. It was it was in kind of rough shape there, right? It, it was in it was in really rough shape. I was actually in the building before we purchased it and it was it was in really rough shape, yeah. Yeah, so 650 on the buy and then uh, construction. What did, you know, we, we basically had to turn this thing into two two level condos. You know, really, really nice, beautiful product. Um, what, what did that cost? Yeah, we normally, per unit on, on these smaller deals, we usually do, we usually spend about 250 per unit, but this one we spent a little bit more per unit because, um, you know, it gets a higher end area. That's what allowed us to get the higher price points because we spent more on finishes. So we spent about 600 on construction in this one. 600. Uh, what other costs would we have had that we need to include here? The hold, so the, the bank loan on this was, was what, in the 5% range, correct? Yeah, correct. Uh -huh. So over the course of, you know, a little over a year, we were probably about 70, 75K mm -hmm. in interest. I'm in, you know, add in some bank points and all that, probably uh, around eight, 85, somewhere around there. Um, so all in, we were, you know, with our, our our costs a uh, little over one what does that come out to three three five maybe yeah one three three five is, is like our total like you know kind of hard cost right yeah, you could even say you know one one three five to make it round round up even if you want or whatever right because we, we may have had some other miscellaneous small things so one point three five mil uh is the whole board on on this all right, so the sales side here, we were uh, unit, the top unit got uh, just under 900K, right? Yeah, put 900 was just a couple thousand under it, but. Yeah, 900, and the lower unit was in the sevens, right? Seven. Yeah, we, we sold for 750, but we had a 20, uh, 20K, uh, seller uh, credit so 730, 730 net yeah. yep so our total sale was 163 mm -hmm. and yep. we we paid out of about 50k on this in buyer commissions dc taxes all that right so that's going to take our our net sale down to 158 somewhere in there mm -hmm. So you can see, you know, we got one five eight of, of net profit, one three five in expenses. So this again, this is like a smaller project. It's a very yeah for us Smallest a very small one. project. We still pulled in. That's gonna be roughly two hundred and thirty k. You know, that's right. after paying the bank. So mm -hmm. um, you know, our investors got paid out of this pie, and I think we raised. Um, the total, the total we had to pay investors to deliver the return was about 60, 60K in preferred return on, to our investors. So this, yep. is, this is how much the investors made. So you can see we had a, even with this black swan terrible mm -hmm. event, mm -hmm. huge, huge margin mm -hmm. above mm -hmm. uh, what we had to pay out to our investors and you know, on a, on a one five eight sale, you if you back out these bank expenses here, uh, we're well above twenty percent return on cost, which is a great metric to hit. Yeah, I think even you know, 
the, the return's been great. This is a very small project, only two units, so the return has been great. But given the fact that we had to take a little bit of a haircut of the price because of the current situation, plus our, our overall time in the project probably increased by about three or four months because of all the delays and the coronavirus and this and that. So when you add it all up, you know, it's still a great deal despite um, having all these, you know, kind of whatever issues that were outside of our control. Yeah, great, great. I mean, just to kind of wrap up, like, great projects. Mm -hmm. We delivered a 20% you know, return on, on cost or above that. Mm -hmm. uh, had a ton of margin you know, over what we needed to pay our investors. Like, you know, we could have taken almost $200,000 more in haircut on right. the price and, and still, still, investors still paid would have been safe, right? our investors. Mm -hmm. So to me, it's just, it's just exciting that even though we had this once in a lifetime event. Right. We still, still hit our numbers. Still yep. delivered a fifteen percent return without the risk and volatility. You know, this this happened too, like right in the middle of the stock market crash. Yep. <laughs> kind of crazy to. Right. I'm sure our investors were happy they were with us and not in the stock market during this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, I mean, again, you know, not to you know reiterate too much, but that, I think that's because you know we, we bought the project properly, we we, we perform properly, uh, we're in a market that no matter what, pretty much you can sell property because it's Washington D.C. So I think when you when you add all those factors up, that's why we were able to deliver a project like this, uh, even during you know, arguably, probably one of the worst times for real estate. It, it was a short little cycle, but you know, um, 08 was a bad, really bad time for real estate, but this particular one was similar in a lot of ways. Yeah, so I am excited we had these, this kind of result and look forward to giving you more updates as well. Stay tuned for our next episode. We're going to dive into an overall review of where we see the DC market and what our projects are doing right now. We'll see you next time. Hey guys, thanks for sticking around to the end. If you wanna see more videos like this, click right here. And if you want 10 tips from Sunil and I on how we've built wealth through real estate, click right here to download them instantly. And if you're new to the channel, click below to subscribe and turn on post notifications so you don't miss out. And let me know in the comments what you think about the videos. I read them weekly and I pick winners at random and I give out stuff like hats, shirts, coaching calls with me and tickets to some of our events. I'll see you next time.